Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at USB 4 and its Thunderbolt compatibility. Now the other day I got in this laptop on loan from Lenovo. This is their Z13 Gen 1. This is powered by a Ryzen processor, but the USB ports on here support USB 4 which supposedly can work with Thunderbolt devices at their full speed. And so what I've got on the desk today are a bunch of Thunderbolt devices like this hard drive here and this network adapter, and I've got an eGPU on the floor. And I thought I would connect these older Thunderbolt 3 devices to this USB 4 equipped Ryzen laptop to see if we can finally get Thunderbolt devices working on Ryzen devices that have this port. It's gonna be a fun science experiment and I've got a bunch of devices to test out here in a second. Now I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that the computer here is on loan from Lenovo and some of the parts that we're going to be playing with I paid for with my own funds and others came in free of charge from the manufacturer so I will let you know which ones are which as we work our way through this but nobody is paying for this review nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded and all of the opinions are my own so let's get into it now and see how well USB 4 and Thunderbolt interact. Now before we get started testing these devices you do need to check your system specifications if it does have a USB 4 port on board because the USB 4 standard does not require manufacturers to support the 40 gigabit per second transport that Thunderbolt devices often depend on. So many laptops will say they're USB 4 compatible and they only need to transport 20 gigabits per second to meet that standard. So you do need to check your manual or your tech specs before you dive into Thunderbolt devices on your USB 4 equipped computer. Now let's take a look at an older Thunderbolt 3 drive. This is a uh, Samsung X5 that came out a number of years ago and this will only work on Thunderbolt computers. Let's take a look and see if USB 4 is compatible. All right, so the drive is attached and I used its Thunderbolt 3 cable. And the good news so far is that this Thunderbolt drive is showing up on my device manager as something that I can use. So this drive, which would not work on a regular USB-C equipped Ryzen laptop is working here. And let's take a look and see what we get. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select the D drive, which is the drive letter that's been assigned here. We're gonna hit the start button. And sure enough, we're getting pretty much those Thunderbolt speeds out of this drive. Again, a Thunderbolt 3 disc that was made a number of years ago for Thunderbolt computers looks to be completely compatible with what we're seeing out of this USB 4 equipped Ryzen laptop. And just to note, the drive that we just tested came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program a little while back, and I did a review of it on my channel. Now, if you were noticing that our speeds were not much faster than 20 gigabits per second, that's because the Thunderbolt spec, which is what this USB 4 spec is now based on, only allows about 22 gigabits per second of data to flow over a 40 gigabit connection. The only time you really get the full 40 is if you're pushing data devices along with displays simultaneously. But we are getting the full potential of this port. And of course, if we had a 20 gigabit per second port, we would see speeds about half of what you see here, which would be very close to a regular USB drive. Let's move on now though to networking. What I've got here is a Sabrent 10 gig uh, ethernet adapter that works over Thunderbolt 3. In full disclosure, this came in free of charge, I believe through the Amazon Vine program also a few years back. This is an older Thunderbolt 3 device. And what I'm gonna do is connect it up to my 10 gig network connection here at the house. And once this gets configured, if it does, uh, we will jump back and do a speed test over my multi-gig internet connection here at the house. Let's wait a second and see what we get. If we take a look here at my network status, you can see that it is working at 10 gigabits per second. So it's been detected properly and we've negotiated that 10 gig link back to my switch. And if I zoom out here, we're gonna run the speedtest.net app because here at my house, I have a six gigabit symmetrical internet connection. So let's see how much data we can push over this Thunderbolt device. And as you can see, we're getting pretty much the full extent 
of my internet connection on the downstream. Let's see how it does on the upstream. Now we are certainly doing better than what we would get out of a USB network adapter. And again, this one is designed specifically for Thunderbolt 3 computers. And although my upload was a little off here by about a gigabit, uh, it is working at the full potential here. So this Thunderbolt multi-gig network adapter that wouldn't have worked on prior Ryzen PCs with USB 3 ports does work on this one with USB 4. Now let's take a look at an external GPU and see if we can hook up an NVIDIA graphics card to this Ryzen laptop over that USB 4 port. Let's get to it. All right, on the desk here, I've got my Akidio Node eGPU box that I bought a number of years back. These boxes are basically a box with a power supply and a Thunderbolt output, and it has a PCI Express slot inside, and in that slot right now is a standard desktop GTX 1070 GPU from NVIDIA. You basically buy these boxes without a card, you put whatever card you want into it, and then connect it up to a Thunderbolt compatible laptop. Now in the past, these Ryzen devices could not work with eGPUs because they didn't have Thunderbolt compatibility, but it appears as though, at least from my NVIDIA control panel here, that this one with USB 4, which is compatible with Thunderbolt 3, now is detecting that GPU, and the video output that you see is coming out of this box right now. The next thing I want to do is run a quick benchmark test, the 3D Mark Time Spy test, and see what kind of score that we get. And one thing to note, and this is something I noted when I did the review of this box, is that you want to disable the laptop's display when you run these things and have them only go through the external display because some of the bandwidth gets eaten up mirroring the display back to the laptop when you've got an eGPU attached. So what we're gonna do is disable this internal display and run everything off the external that's coming out of this box right now. And of course, we've got my HDMI cable connected to the card directly on the back of the box. Let me get that benchmark booted up and we'll see what kind of score we get. All right, so now the benchmark is running here and we're getting frame rates, I think are consistent with a 1070, but we'll take a look at the score when it's completed. And I can tell you, I can certainly hear the fans cooking on this GPU and there's heat coming out of the box. So there is uh, very ample evidence here that the GPU is doing a lot of the legwork here versus the built-in graphics processor on the laptop. Uh, the capture rate that I am using right now is 30 frames per second, which is why you see some clipping in the scene here, but it does seem to be running quite smoothly. And if we had an external display attached, it would of course look a little better than it looks right now versus just the capture. But I'm gonna let this run. And when it's done, I will show you what the score is compared to how this same card performs inside of a desktop PC. All right, so our test is completed and we got a score of 5,885. And as I was noting during the test running, the frame rates look to be on par with what we would expect from a 1070. And sure enough, they are here in the final result. If you look there at the top highlighted in yellow is what we just got out of the laptop with the eGPU attached. Below it are two examples of this card running on other computers. The Y710 Cube was a desktop that I reviewed a few years back. You can see we're right on par with that graphically and doing much better on the CPU side because of the Ryzen processor built in. And then below the Cube is a Yoga 720 that we ran uh, with this GPU as a Thunderbolt external device a couple of years back as well. Again, we're besting uh, that configuration on the CPU and seeing similar GPU scores. The last score there is this laptop running on its own without the GPU attached. These Ryzen chips have great graphics built in, and although it performs quite well for a computer without a discrete GPU, you can see the difference that you get by connecting up an external box like this one. So the bottom line here is that if you're out shopping for a Ryzen laptop and want this eGPU compatibility, you need to look for one that has USB 4 ports built in. USB 3 ports will not work with all this stuff like you just saw. And you also need to make sure that your computer will support the USB 4 40 gigabit per second standard because as we noted earlier, 40 gigabit per second support is optional in the USB 4 spec. So I anticipate a lot of manufacturers saying, hey, we support USB 4, 
and not telling you that they only support half of the standard, not the full 40 gigabits. So do your homework prior to purchasing, but so far every Thunderbolt device that I have thrown at this computer has worked, and a lot of this stuff is older Thunderbolt 3 stuff that seems to be working quite well. Your mileage, of course, might vary, and of course, if there's some Thunderbolt 5 standard down the road, that might throw uh, this all off track again in the future. But for now, Thunderbolt 3 here seems to be working great with USB 4 on the Ryzen platform, which is not something we saw previously. That is going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya, and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.